By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And this time I have Post from Deutschland, Germany. Look at these cool Elmo stamps. Sesame Street. Like it. I like it. And this is Post that comes from Martin. And Martin comes from München, Gladbach, Deutschland. And he is a member of the Rhineland Adventures old school scene. And uh, I've met uh, one other player from the Rhineland Adventures. Michael was his name um, in Dusseldorf. Really nice guy. Did really well at the tournament, by the way. He reached the finals of that. Um, anyway, but here a letter. We did some online trading. Uh, and that was quite nice. It was a nice experience. And let's open it up here. Ah, uh, there goes the beautiful sticker. And we got a little opening going on. Let's have a look. Ooh, this looks very well packed. That is quite impressive because I also sent you a pack back, Martin, but I'm not sure if I packed it as well as you did. That is pretty sweet. Much appreciate it. I really like it and top loader and cardboard check this site too Merry Christmas oh it's in uh, Dutch prettig kerstfeest that means Merry Christmas that is sweet now let's try to open it up a little bit in a gentle way we have time no need to rush I'm sitting in my living room, by the way. Usually I make these videos in the office. Oh, there's something under here. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't want to spoil it. I'm going to take it out. Okay, okay, I feel text. This is cool. Boom. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. This is a German Timmy, you know. Um, Abtrünniger Zauberer. I know Zauberer means, I think, sorcerer. And then, of course, this must mean prodigal in German. And then we've got Doctor Strange, Master of Black Magic stuck on top. How cool is that? Wow. That is sweet. Thank you, man. Much appreciate it. And there's actually here, there's some altar, more altar going on with the flavor text section. It's here it says Doc Strange. And there, RA for Rhineland Adventures. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. Doc Strange. Wow, wow, wow. I really, 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 let me just get, yeah, get the focus back. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you very much, Martin. I really, really appreciate it. This is going into my collection. And I think I'm actually going to post maybe some, some pictures on my Instagram to show all the different Timmies that I have so far. They're just so many cool timmies that people have sent me from all over the world so this goes into that collection very very much appreciate it just that you put your effort into this to make this makes it really special thank you for that um and ah there we go a sticker yes 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 and this sticker is going on my deck box this one i got a couple of stickers already this is from the Dutch Old School Guild, and I've got one from Alamo City, and I've got one from the New England Old School. I think it's uh, Dave Ferv Bart is connected to that as well. I've got some of my own stickers over here. I think I sent you a couple of these, Martin, back, by the way, in my pack. So very much appreciate. I've got one of the um, Desert Twisters. So that's pretty sweet. So nice, so I'm definitely gonna, gonna add that sticker to it. Really sweet, sweet mail day. Let me put it over there. And what else do we have? Just gonna take it off camera for a second. Maybe you're wondering why, but it's just that I don't wanna make sure that I don't spoil anything here. And there we go. 
Let's see, what is in here? Okay, let's save this for last. It's in the top loader, so this is important stuff. And we got some other stuff here, because I'm actually building, as people know, I'm kind of collecting Fallen Empires, Revised and 4th Edition. I'm just trying to build some, um, some reprint sets. Okay, here we see a token, and there is a Pestilence. So this is for my fourth edition collection. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to trade as much as possible, kind of to, to keep it fun. And this is nice, Chaos Lace. Cool card, not very useful. And there is a, oh, a German, a <laughs> sweet, a Rotter Urknall. Oh man, I, I just really like it. I really like it. Rotter Urknall. This is nice. This can see some play in my, uh, in my holiday deck where I only play with foreign cards. And we have more. This looks like, is it a Mana Barbs? Let's, let's have a look, let's check it out. Oh, let's cut this away. There we go. Boom, let's see, this one is empty. Yeah, exactly, it's a Mana Barbs. The nice thing is I was talking with Martin and he was like, well, I'll, send you a few cards for your fourth edition collection. So that's very much appreciated. So Mana Barbs here, um, for the people that don't know, one red and three to cast in Shaman. And each time any land is stepped for mana, Mana Barbs deals one damage to that land's controller. So this is actually quite an interesting card. I think in, in a red kind of direct damage strategy, this is just another card that can make it really difficult for your opponent. You know, with those decks that play Vice, Ankh of Mishra, you know, maybe Mana Barbs can be added to that list. Remember, the land has to be tapped for mana though, so this doesn't work with, for example, an Icy Manipulator when you, when you tap down the lands. And then we have a really nice card here, Bowl Lightning, a reprint from the dark, three red to cast, six one Trampler, with haste and I actually had a, a lot of games lately on the channel with decks that actually play with bull lightning. So that's, that's really sweet. And we've got a Felwer stone. So Felwer stone is a card that, that also sees a lot of play in old school because of the city of uh, city of brass from Arabian nights. Uh, because when the city of brass, when your opponent has one, then you can basically tap this for every type of mana, but it doesn't, deal a damage to you. So it's better than City of Brass in those situations. Making it a pretty good budget replacement for Moxon, actually. And yes, I know it's two mana, but still. Ah, this card. Yeah, this always reminds me of the Mayan calendar. Conservator. Extremely mediocre card. Four to cast, three and tap, prevent up to two damage to you. Yeah, so not even to, a, to any target, only to you. So you can't use it to save a creature in combat, for example. Okay, which one is this? Change the color. Okay, this is Death Lace. Really nice. And Death Lace, this kind of like, this card could work in a deck where, for example, with a Northern Paladin or a deck where um, you play with the Abyss. You want to make your creature black so that it doesn't die to the abyss. Pretty cool. And we have, oh, Navanurl's Disc. That is a nice one. Very strong card. Forty cast comes into play tapped. When it untaps, you can pay one and tap and destroy all creatures, enchantments, and artifacts, including the disc itself. And this is pretty cool. If you tap it, it destroys everything, but um, sacrificing the disc is not part of the cost. So what you can do is you can play it, and while the effect is on the stack, you can play a Hercules Recall and get this back to your hand, and then it destroys everything. Well, you get all your other artifacts back to your hand, of course, and then the disc goes off. So I'm kind of thinking about making a deck with Hercules Recall and Nevenerals Disc. Yeah. Ooh, another one. Counter. This is the. Uh, is it Death Lace? No, it's not a lace, of course. That's this is Death Lace. 
Um, the enchantment that can counter green spells. Death Grip. That's the one, Death Grip. Two black, and then you pay two black, counter target green spell, play this ability as an interrupt. Now, the problem with this card is that when you play against uh, green decks, they're usually very, very quick. It's usually green stompy, and Death Grip is simply too slow to kind of manage the whole situation. So for two black, it's usually better to just play, for example, a black knight that can block a lot of the green threats instead of casting this. So I think, you know, that's probably why it doesn't see a lot of play also in sideboards. And whoa, this card, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said it a few times um, on the channel and on my Instagram that I think that the Apprentice Wizard is actually holding the Disrupting Scepter. Um, if you look at the Scepter, the shape, but also the fact that the Scepter costs three. Apprentice Wizard, one blue and tap for three, so you can then cast the Scepter. And also the effect of the Scepter is three generic mana. Um, so three and tap, right? And target player chooses and discard one card from his or her hand. Use this ability only during your turn. So this is actually a pretty nice card. Doesn't see that much play. Of course, it's part of the deck strategy. If it would discard a card at random, but maybe then it would just be too good, perhaps. But I, I like it. I like it. And by the way, just to give you another um, piece of evidence for my theory that the Apprentice Wizard is holding the scepter, uh, the artworks are both made by Dan Frazier. So I guess I guess I have to. I'm gonna contact Dan. I'm gonna gonna try to contact him uh, to find out if my theory is correct. Okay, and then we have more cards. Even beautiful Sarah Angel. Wow, Martin, I really want to thank you for all these 4th edition cards because we actually traded another card um, and you just sent all this 4th edition with it. So really, really appreciate it. I just love this art. I really, really love this art. I know there are many reprints, but I mean, this is the art for me. This is it. And this is also when Sarah Angel was one of the strongest creatures in the game. It saw so much play just because... Five for a four for flying, that's already good. Oh, look, it is German. I didn't even see that. Sarah Engel as kann fliegen. <laughs> I love it, man. Four for flyer. And uh, what I wanted to say, the, the fact that this creature can attack without tapping, I mean, nowadays they call that vigilance, but that is really, really unique. There aren't a lot of creatures in the game of old school that have that ability. Um, just thinking at the, the top of my mind here, um, Yoshin Soldier in old school, Zephyr Falcon in old school, and there are probably a few others, but those are the first two that kind of pop to mind here. So Seta Engel for, for flying, and this is a German one. So actually I'm going to make a separate pile for those because they're, they're going to go in my holiday deck. This one, again, German. Oh, sweet. Swords to Plausius. Let, let me try to pronounce this. Schwarze zu Plaugschaden. Nimm eine Kreatur ganz aus dem Spiel. Sweet. Spiel means game. Nice. Very nice. Okay. So, oh, another one. Oh, this one is nice. A German one. Ah, uh, this is the the, the 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 sandworm, right? Or landworm, elder landworm from Legends originally. Seven to cast for five five, and you cannot attack with it until it has blocked something. So can you imagine in modern magic if they would make a card that's costing seven for a five five creature with a downside? That just wouldn't work. But I really really love that artwork here. You can kind of see the dragon resting in the desert. Beautiful. To me, it looks more like a dragon than a landworm, but maybe that's just me. And here we've got Quentin Hoover. Quentin, always good art from Quentin Hoover. Beautiful lines always by Quentin Hoover. Um, okay, we've got even more. Well, it really looks like Christmas came early. Let's flip it. And, oh, we got more German 4th edition. Erwachen del Walder. Living lands, all your forests become one one with this one. Beautiful art. I would love to play this in a deck with Moss Monster. Let me know if, if you're listening to this and you have a deck with this in it and Moss Monster, please let me know. I need I need to play Moss Monster also epic art. 
just for mere force. Fantastic. And that goes on the German pile. And here we've got an English card, Cockatrice, flying 2-4. And it's actually, this card is better than you expect. Uh, two green and three. And it, it has that thicket basilisk effect, right? At the end of combat, destroy all non wall creatures blocking or blocked by Cockatrice. So this is really a good card. If you kind of play, I, I, I had a deck that I called Green Control, which is, I can tell you, it's not easy to play Green Control, uh, <laughs> but Cockatrice really was an all-star in that deck. I also played with Tracker, for example, just to give you an idea. Uh, we've got a white card, Ra oh, wow, Wrath of God. Yeah, and this is one of the cards that I traded with you, Martin, I remember. Oh, wait, this Cockatrice English, so it's gonna be with the English cards. Beautiful, beautiful card. Now, for the people that don't, uh, may not have noticed it yet in the art, uh, this is a face. Do you see that? This is the face of God, I guess, the wrath of God. You can see here, these are like the eyes or the eyebrows. This is the nose. You've got the mouth here. And that art, yes, fantastic. Quentin Hoover, right, if I remember it correctly. And you can see that by the lines, just the lines of Quentin Hoover. The line work is phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, Quentin Hoover, of course. Sorcery, bury all creatures. And bury means you cannot regenerate it. If it says destroy, then you can still regenerate it. When it says bury, it means you cannot regenerate the creature. Some old school language for you there. Anyway, Wrath of God. This is really sweet. I mean, my fourth edition collection is going places, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen, um, flipping it around. Oh, a German one. Todespresse, the black vice for one. Artifact, not an artifact, but an artifact. Really nice. It's going to the on the German pile. And a dancing scimitar for to cast with the Arabian Nights expansion symbol flying 1-5 creature. Doesn't see a lot of play. I know why, but again, I kind of feel it's not that bad. It, maybe it should see more play. I mean, a 1-5 in the air that can block so much in old school. Let's have a look. Okay, we're getting a blue card. Nene Thomas, I think this is the Hercules Recall. Yes, it is. I am really a big fan of the artwork of Hercules Recall. One blue and one to cast for an instant and all artifacts in play owned by target player or return to the player's hand. If you look closely, you can see a little, two little eyes staring out of the chest. It is really sweet. Really good art by Nene Thomas. And I think this card, I already, you know, earlier in this episode or in this in this video, right, I told you about the combination, these two cards combined. I think it's quite interesting to combine these two. And Hercules Recall, what I like so much about the card is um, that you can play it defensively and you can play it, play it offensively. So uh, to give you an example, when somebody plays a Shatterstorm in response, I could play my Hercules Recall and I can save my artifacts, right? But what I can also do is when my opponent plays a draw seven, for example, a Wheel of Fortune, or even better, a Time Twister, in response, I can play Hercules Recall and say, you know what? Take all your artifacts back into your hand and shuffle them back into your library, <laughs> you know? And that way, make it a very bad trade for my opponent. So that could be really cool. Okay, so wow. Look at all these cards here. And this is the last one. Let me take it out. Um, this one I traded with, with Martin and, uh, it was re really a nice trade and it's really good condition. Oh, look at the bottom. We got a couple of flakes. Oh, it's having a hard time zooming in. Sorry for that. Let me flip it. You're probably curious what card it is. It is the Soul Canard, the Swamp King. One blue, one black, one red, and two to cast. Summon Legend, Swamp Walk, and Soul Canard's control against one life each time a black spell is cast. And this, once, this ability gave me the victory in a match once. You know what? I'll, I'll have a pop-up here 
coming up while I say this, so you can actually watch that match if you haven't watched it yet. And then I was actually playing not with my Soul Canard the Swamp King, but with my brother Soul Canard the Swamp King. So Martin, I'm very thankful that I could trade this with you because now I have my own Soul Canard the Swamp King. And I also have a Tetsuo um, that I got earlier from, from Dion. Um, so now I can play both of these in my EDH old school deck. So I'm really looking forward to do that. Okay, this was the mail day. Wow, we're already on... 20 minutes here. This is uh, the mail day for today from Martin from the Rhineland Adventures Old School Magic Club. This is such a cool sticker. And thank you very much for all this fantastic fourth edition and also for the German fourth edition and this altar. For me, this altar is really, it's the, this is the, the cherry on top of the pie. This is fantastic. Thank you, Martin, for sending this out to me. I also want to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you leave, I'd like to ask you to like this video, leave a comment, become a subscriber if you're not subscribed yet. And you can also become a Patreon. I should say you can become a patron of the channel. And um, if you're interested in that, there's probably a link popping up right now. Click on that link and you can see how you can support my channel via Patreon. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ich kann das Fink, das Sommer gesehen.